Hi everyone, hope you're having a great week. So I haven't gone around to doing a garden tour at all this spring. So the first one today we're doing is a spring garden tour of the flower beds. So we have the front flower bed here. We also have a couple on the side of the house. There's a rock bed with some flowers and also some shade loving crops. And then on the next tour, I'll get to the vegetable garden. And also I'll try and upload a normal video at least once a week. I know some of you guys are liking the shorts, some of you are not really fond of it. So I'm just trying to do what I can do at the meantime. I'm working on a few projects and one of them is a, a kind of a big project I'm working on that I cannot wait to share with you all. So stay tuned for that later December. All right, let's take a walk and I hope that you enjoyed this tour and thank you so much for your continued support. Thank you all to the new subscribers. Really appreciate you all taking time to watch our videos. Have a great day everyone and happy gardening! Today is May 10th. The previous pictures in the beginning of this videos were from April around the first to the third week of April. And as you can see, the candy tuft are still doing well. Such a great ground cover and it is so beautiful. Some of those tulips are starting to fade out, although we have some later blooming varieties right there, the dark wine ones with some daffodils. So I'll just kind of walk around here and it looks like the columbine are emerging. These are yarrow, also a medicinal herb, but always do your research when you are using herbs for medicinal purposes. This is cornflower. And we have some carnations or dianthus, perennials. Oh yeah, by the way, a lot of these are perennial plants. Now we do have a few annuals in that bed where, where I'll be planting some tomatoes along with those marigolds and I think some poppies in there. Here's a columbine that opened up already. So as the tulips start to fade and their foliage dies back, the lilies, the summer blooming lilies are going to be popping up right in front of the tulips. I also have some lilies over here already starting to emerge and a couple more over here. And we also have some peonies that will be flowering late spring, early summer, and also some alliums. There's one, the allium giganteum or globemaster. Now back over here are some calla lilies right there with the big leaves right there. I cannot remember these ones here. I kind of planted these throughout. I'm thinking they might be Dutch irises, but I'm not sure until they start to bloom. And over here are more peonies and columbine. And over in the back side are going to be the taller flowers, which are dahlia and also some gladiolus. Okay, so back to the front again. These are wild garlic right here. And that's actually um, an edible. It's an allium, so part of the onion and garlic family. They're also down here. And the flowers are just starting to emerge. They smell just like garlic and taste just like mild garlic. All right, let's move along over here. These are Lithodora. Oh, it looks like I need to water them. Also a perennial. Oh, and by the way, yarrow is a perennial. Carnations are perennials and cornflower is also a perennial that's why i love perennial plants it's because once they are established they will come back every year for you as long as they are grown in the right conditions i think this is just gorgeous such a beautiful deep wine some daffodils um, this one is spiderwort, which is a native to the Pacific Northwest. It has the um, bluish purple flowers. Oh my gosh, look at this. This is a potato. <laughs> the squirrels dig up our garden in the backyard. And so I bet you they bury this little potato in here. I'm going to leave that in there and just see what happens. More uh, spiderwort. Daffodil starting to fade. Euphorbia, very drought tolerant. More columbine and more of the spring, early spring blooms, hyacinth. And a couple of roses that I dug up. 
that I'll be planting in this patch. It's going out of control. The vinca, the vining or periwinkle, is just taken over. So I haven't had time to maintain this area. So I'm going to be removing some of that. And these are all roses here. So we've got a few rose plants throughout there that I need to place a support. These are Spanish bluebells. They are so beautiful and the bumblebees love them. It's another hardy perennial. This one here is an oriental spruce shrub. And I actually really pruned this back. It was a big mound, kind of a round shrub. It, it looked kind of um, unkept. <laughs> so my husband, I kind of um, pruned the bottoms Kind of made it look like a bonsai kind of looking shrub so it, it needs to be pruned back again but i think it's just so so beautiful look at all these beautiful growth tips they are so soft and also spruce tips are edible they are pretty tangy a little citrusy flavor but always do your own research before you eat any plants or wild plants very important because a lot of them are poisonous here are the bleeding hearts one of my most favorite flowers they thrive in part shade and it is a perennial so there is going to be some background noise because I am near the road right now there's one coming up right now hold on so there are some ferns back there and we pretty much just leave this area alone um, for the wildlife, so a lot of these are perennial plants which house wildlife and provide food for them. There are some blackberries growing wildly, as you can see, but we eat those as well. The birds love them as well as the squirrels. Fern, I think this is a sword leaf fern. Lots of new growth right there. Got a cedar tree here and a Douglas fir tree right there. Some more fern. So I know this patch looks wild and crazy, but these plants are actually a wild edible. So I kept them around and I let them proliferate. But it also possesses medicinal properties. So it's called Gallium apirine and or cleavers is in the coffee family ruby ace so i let them proliferate here and they have these hairs or trichomes that are kind of that stick to you see it's sticking to my my hand but um i'll put some information down below in the description box if you'd like to learn more about this plant so i kind of got them throughout here now over this way is my little new garden. It's like a shade garden. And I actually started to make a video on this when I planted them. So these are wild leek or ramps and wild ginger. And they grow in the shade. Usually grown or they usually grow in the woodlands. So in the forest where they are shaded. Also have a red huckleberry growing here. This is a native plant to the Pacific Northwest and also some wood sorrel throughout which also thrive in the shade and wood sorrel is actually an edible wild edible as well although it has a significant amount of oxalic acid so if you decide to eat wood sorrel eat them in moderation and again always do your own research so this area needs some work just haven't gotten around to doing some maintenance on this side and looks like we have a dead rhododendron right there so something I can work on this summer and I might actually plant some shade loving crops over here so some edible plants in this area or some herbs that thrive in the shade this whole area is shaded by this massive fir tree. Um, it looks like we need to do some thinning. There are some dead branches in there. So, but we love it. It's just nice to have all these trees around and attracts wildlife, provides food and shelter. This one is another huckleberry, red huckleberry. And 
There are some berries in there, still green, still tiny. So these are new plants. My mother gave these to me for Mother's Day. This is dwarf lilac and porcelain blue cordalis. Aren't they pretty? So elegant and they smell so good. Oh, also there is a small azalea right here. So picked out this weeping willow. It's a little tree. It's so cute. Some irises about to blossom. These are lamb's ears. These are great for surrounding your uh, garden. They actually deter deer. They don't like to chew on the leaves because they are covered with plant hairs or trichomes. So they don't like the texture of it. But it looks like I need to kind of thin them out they're spreading all over if you let them seed they will proliferate so be careful when you're letting your plant seed so now we're heading towards the southwest of the garden sorry about the sun so bright this is our rock garden my husband put this together two years ago now and all these plants have gotten so big so beautiful juniper there are some let's see succulent stone crop in there more hens and chicks. This one is called Virginia. Another cold hardy perennial. Beautiful irises. And these ones here are called Serbian bells, I believe. They're a purple flower. The bees love those. Pisha columbine right there in the middle. Looks like they're just starting to open up. I like these. The pollinators love columbine. Oops, there's one that's open. So pretty. Oops, <laughs> daddy, I'm stepping on the plants. These are daylilies. These ones really grew They're all over the place. I might have to thin them out. It's another Virginia. These are dying back already. Another juniper. I just planted these ones last year. They have these crimson red flowers. It is called bronze leaf. So it's a perennial. It looks like something's eating it. This one should blossom sometime around early summer. The camellia is blooming. Look how gorgeous those flowers are. The one next to it is called mountain laurel. Pink florets. Hasn't blossomed yet. And down there, those are all wood sorrel. So we just leave it as a ground cover. I think they look pretty. Here's another flower patch. This is a blue hydrangea. This one is a lilac foxglove or digitalis. Oh, by the way, this is the same plant where they extract the compounds from to make that heart medication. And this plant, is toxic so make sure you keep an eye on your pets and small children and let them know that it is a poisonous plant shasta daisy or lucanthemum woodland phlox i love this one it's so pretty the butterflies love these so do the bumblebees and it smells so good another spanish bluebell right here it's more shasta daisies and this one I just planted. This is called Siberian Bug Loss or Brunera. I believe it is in the Borage family and closely related to Forget-Me-Not. So I am going to be removing the flowers once they dry up so they don't spread. They can grow like weeds, but I really love the heart-shaped leaves. Look at that. And the color, so pretty. And this one here is red currant flower. And this was actually given to me by my mom. She found it at Lowe's on clearance for I think $2 last year. And it's about three feet tall and it looks really healthy. So I love shopping clearance. There's nothing wrong with that. Just make sure that you select healthy plants. So here is the last part of this garden tour. This is our Littlest Gardeners flower patch, although there are some herbs in there. 
also we planted some petunias, pansies, violas. My mom gave us this hydrangea. It's called Pinky Winky. So it's supposed to be pink flowers. Cannot wait to see those. This one's Leopard's Bane, another perennial, hardy perennial. Then we also have a couple of columbine here. These ones are chrysanthemums, so another perennial. These colors are, I believe, orange, yellow, and white. Even some lavender in there, I believe. And then this is lemon balm. So this is a small pollinator garden. Attract those pollinators and increase your crop yields, but you're also supporting wildlife. Thank you so much for joining me today, everyone. I hope that you enjoyed this garden tour. Stay tuned for the vegetable or backyard garden tour. Have a wonderful day, everyone, and happy gardening.